today we are going to study about gravitational potential energy. Up to now we have studied that the gravitational potential energy is given by mgh if there is an object of mass m at a height h on the surface of earth it has a potential energy of mgh. Now we have also calculated the work done by the gravitational force in this particular situation where we have assumed that gravitational acceleration is a constant. So if gravitational acceleration is a constant and on the surface of earth we are moving an object from one point to the other, let us say this is R1 and then it moves to a distance R2 and it has a mass of m and we are applying some external force and this external force is equal to gravitational force and this uh, when we are lifting this object it is done very very slowly so that the external force and the gravitational force they have the same magnitude. So this is what we assume before starting with this. And when it is moving from this point to this point, the displacement vector will also point in the upward direction. So let us say that dr vector will also point along f external vector. So now let's try to find out the work done by the external force. So first of all, the work done is given by force vector dot displacement vector. So this is the basic definition of work done. If we have to find out the work done by the external force, it will be f external dot dr vector. Now both of them, um, both are f external vector and dr vector they are in the same direction so the angle between them will be zero so we'll just take their magnitudes multiplied with cosine of zero so this cosine of zero will give you one and f external is equal to mg and mg is a constant so we can take it outside integral of dr and in we'll have to integrate it from r r1 to r2 i'm purposely taking them to be r1 and r2 so that we are not confused with what is initial and final also these r1 and r2 they are not vectors they are just lengths so we are moving from one length to the other due to this external force so then we can get when we integrate dr, we'll get r, so it will be r2 minus r1. So it is potential energy, potential energy at 1, so let us say it is delta u. So the work done by the external force is equal to delta u. Now suppose that on the surface of earth, there is an object and it is moving due to the gravitational force and it reaches somewhere here. So this distance is R1 and this distance is R2. And because it is moving downward due to gravitational force, the displacement vector is also in the same direction. So now if we have to find out the work done, then the work done by the gravitational force will be integral of Fg vector dot dr vector. Now the angle between them again is zero because the object is moving from here to here from a distance r2 to distance r1. So fg vector and dr vector they will again have a cosine of zero. So what we'll get from here is fg into dr integral. Now the gravitational force is a constant so we can take it outside the integral and integrating it over dr and the integral will be from initial to final so because we are moving from r2 to r1 so the integral will be from r2 to r1 so we'll get mg 
R1 minus R2. So it will be Mg R1 minus Mg R2 which will be U1 minus U2 or minus delta U. Now let us assume that the gravitational force is not a constant and we are not working this separation here is very small so small that the gravitational acceleration remains constant but if this separation between the two objects r1 minus r2 or r2 minus r1 is very large then gravitational acceleration will not be a constant so if it is not a constant then it means in the second situation we are assuming that the gravitational acceleration is not a constant and so if it is not a constant it means that it varies with distance as we move away from earth it will vary now let us try to find out what will be the expression for the work done when gravitational acceleration is not constant when we are saying it is not constant what does it mean it means that it is changing with height and we are working in a height difference which is very very large difference where g doesn't stay constant so because you know that the gravitational acceleration gravitational force is also given by upon r square magnitude when we're talking about a system where we have earth and mass system so if this is the earth mass system then the mass of earth is me so and the distance between them is r then force of gravitation is given by this and it is also given by mg so it means that g in this case is varying with r and the expression shows that it varies with r square now now let us say that on the surface of earth this object is moving downwards due to the gravitational acceleration and it reaches somewhere here and this distance is r2 and this distance is r1 and because the object is moving downwards and it is moving along the force so dr vector will also be downwards so if now we have to find out the work done by the gravitational force it will be fg vector dot dr vector and because they are in the same direction the angle between them is zero cosine of zero so it will be one so fg dr integral now we can't take fg outside because it is a function of r so let us put the value of fg and the integral limit will be from r2 to r1 so now because the numerator is a constant so it will be g capital m e small m integral of dr upon r square r2 to r1 so this integration will turn out to be r minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 and the integral will be from r2 to r1 so this will give you a negative because of this and g m e into m and 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 because this is initial and this is final so it will be r2 to r1 so when we integrate it will be r1 minus 1 upon r2 so this will be the work done by the gravitational force now because we know that the work done by because it is an internal force so because we know that the work done by the internal force is equal to minus of delta u and as we have found out that 
del minus of delta u in this case will mean minus of u2 minus u1 as we've seen from what we found out that delta u is equal to u2 minus u1 so that is why here it will be minus u2 minus u1 so when we equate these two what we'll get is that minus g capital M E M plus u1 and now it means that minus g M E M upon R1 plus G capital M E M upon R2 is equal to minus U2 plus U1. So now let us assume that R2 is at infinite distance. We are coming from an infinite distance. So when R2, if R2 is infinite, U2 will be equal to 0 because there will be no potential energy when we are talking about an infinite distance because if this distance is infinite then at infinite distance there will be no potential energy with respect to earth this mass will not feel any force with respect to earth from earth so it will not have any potential energy because the gravitational force will tend to zero because the gravitational force also depends upon 1 upon r square so if r will be infinite gravitational force will be zero so it will not feel any potential it will not have any potential energy so it means that what we'll get from here is that minus g m e into m upon r1 is equal to u1 so what it means here is this one means that if at R1 it is potential energy at U1 so if it is R2 it will be U2 and similarly if we would have taken R2 infinite then it will be 0 and again we will get U1 R1 and if U1 will be 0 then again we will get U2 is equal to minus G M E M upon R2 so it means that it is a general condition 1 is for 1, 2 for 2, 3 for 3, A for A so it means that if we generalize it we can say that potential energy will be minus g m e m upon r a particular distance where we are where we have reached from infinity is what is r so this is how we can find out the potential energy of earth mass system